that one just gets me going. It feels heroic, which is a good thing because I see a hero in front of me. Welcome to Hero Basecamp. Now this series of workshop and workouts is designed to prepare you for my hero training series that's gonna be coming up. The trouble I always find with follow along workouts is that you don't always know if you're doing the movements that you encounter safely or correctly, or you encounter them under you know, quite high tempo time scenarios and it can feel quite rushed. What I want you to uh, have achieved by the end of this week of workouts and videos is to feel a little more confident and comfortable when these movements come up in a time scenario. I'm not gonna be coaching you through or talking throughout the workouts for fairly obvious reasons, but I wanna make sure that you feel comfortable with the workouts that we're gonna be taking on together. So each of these days in the series, there's gonna be four workshops this week, uh, breaking down the primary uh, movement patterns that you're gonna be encountering and what these exercises that sort of slot into those will look like. Today, for example, we're breaking down squatting patterns patterns and single leg squatting like lunging and split squats that occur primarily at the knee uh, and then for the upper body we're looking at pulling patterns okay and also some isolation movements that we're going to be using to target more or less the same muscles in the back so across those two we're going to be introducing you to some movements I'm going to be uh, just cueing you through what I want you to feel and how I want you to go about executing these movements. We're gonna have a little bit of a, a play set together and I want you to, uh, to follow along with me and give that a shot. And then I will just talk about the various things that you're gonna encounter uh, from a logistical standpoint when you come to do the workouts with me. All right, and that way I feel like we're really covering our bases so you can be uh, confident you're moving safely and effectively within those follow along workouts and you can just focus on the hard work at hand. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at is the squat pattern, okay? So you may well have done plenty of these before. I just wanna talk through what I want you to aim for and how I want you to focus individually uh, on what you're getting out of the exercise during the workouts. So generally speaking, we wanna have our feet around shoulder width apart and it's okay to have the toes pointing out kind of 10 and two on the clock. That should allow you to drive the knees out and sit down into a fairly comfortable position. I'm sort of just gonna turn diagonally on from you here so you can kind of see that, all right? What I want you to do is initiate by driving the bum back and pushing the knees out and sitting down to a depth that you are able to achieve. Now, I always love prioritizing range of motion, which is to say how much range, how much movement you can create at these joints, um, rather than like the weights lifted or the amount of reps done. So you'll notice here, I'm sitting into a rather deep squat. I've done plenty of these, right? Um, but what I want you to do is just sit down as low as you can by whilst maintaining good form for me, okay? Um, and it may or may not look anything like this, that's absolutely fine. You will get better over time, you will increase your range of movement and how confident you feel. And then we come back up. All right, so I'm driving the hips back, pushing the knees out until I get to my bottom position, whatever that is, and then I come back up. All the while, I'm trying to keep my chest as tall as I can, which is to say I'm not letting myself drop forward. I'm trying to keep my upper back nice and extended, and it looks quite nice like this. Now that would be an air squat, which is to say just using our own body weight, and that will come up in the program. But largely what you will need uh, in its entirety across the whole of the hero training series is simply a pair of dumbbells. That being said, it is advantageous to have multiple weights to choose from. Now this might be two different weights or three different weights. In my case, I have three different sets of dumbbells, which may be seen as a luxury, okay? But that's just gonna allow me to uh, move some heavier weights for exercises that you get a lot more help from, multi-joint movements such as heavier squats or rows, for example, but I also have access to some more medium weights and then lighter ones uh, for smaller isolation movements that we're gonna encounter later on. Now, do not worry if you don't have that. You can just do your best with the dumbbells that you have, and then over time, you might find you either wanna invest in more or indeed, uh, do these workouts from a gym that will have a selection of a multitude of weights. That's gonna be a fantastic way of making progress here, is you can repeat these workouts as much as you like, and you can use heavier weights each time. That is what we call progressive overload. That is how you get stronger, build muscle, and frankly, make progress with your training. Um, so, having done some bodyweight squats, we're now going to look at how we're gonna load that up in its first most simple instance, and that's gonna be in a goblet squat. Now that's where we hold it like we're cupping a goblet, a cup. All right, so I'm gonna choose one of my medium weights here and hold it like so. Okay, and from there we perform the movement just as we did before, control down and up. Now, depending on the workout, you may well see me program in any of these workouts a controlled slow descent we might add in a pause. Again, this will all be on the screen or I will explain to you before uh, each workout. Okay, so we might manipulate the tempo that we're using, but that is our goblet squat. I just want you to try this with me now and we're gonna go through a set of 10 reps. 
I'm just going to control down a standard squat for us today. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. And I'm going to pop that down. So that was our goblet squat. That's going to be one of our mainstay lower body movements. And you can really use quite challenging weights with that when you feel quite comfortable using it. As I said, that was a, a medium weight for me. I used 20 kilos there. I do have access to 30 kilo dumbbells, which are obviously very heavy for some of the bigger movements, like I said. Will be advantageous for me to use those so I can really challenge myself. Okay. Next up, we're going to be looking at um, a second way that we might load this squat up that we will encounter. And that is a dual dumbbell front squat where we're going to be holding two dumbbells in a position like this now this is another uniquely way a unique way of challenging how we're going to be holding the weight it's going to require your upper back muscles to stabilize a little bit more to maintain this challenging position it can also help you depending on the weights that you have access to as i said um, challenge the the weight a little bit more by using two dumbbells if you only if you only have one pair for example or two pairs and we're doing goblet squats, you might find you could use two dumbbells and do the front squats that I'm going to show you. I am going to use the lighter dumbbells here. Okay, just to show you this. And frankly, <laughs> so I don't get too out of breath while I'm explaining everything to you. All right, so with our dual front squat, we want to hold the dumbbells in this rack position. Now you'll see these performed a number of ways. I simply like to keep my elbows quite high. You might see me rest the heads of the dumbbell on my shoulders, okay? But generally speaking, anything like this is nice. If you see me get tired during a workout or I'm trying to support the dumbbells for a long time, we might hold them like that, okay? But generally speaking, I'm just pulling my elbows up and I'm holding my dumbbells in this position, okay? And we can still perform a really nice squat like that, okay? So we've just explored a couple of ways that you'll see us load up our squats with weights during the hero training series. I just want to talk about a couple of considerations uh, that will be relevant to you depending on your training environment or your experience level. So you might find that you struggle to get down to depth. You're a bit tight in the hips and the ankles and stuff. That's okay. Okay, that is going to get better with practice. But what can be useful if you have access to it is having like a little bench or a box that sits you down and kind of puts your legs at parallel or low. And that just gives you something to aim for each time. All right, whether you're holding weights or not. So having a box or something to squat to can be a nice way of building your confidence and your depth there. Also, if you have access to it, if you are tight in the ankle and that can't drift forward and to facilitate that position, you can put books, little ramps or wedges of about an inch or so or a little more under the heel and that will support you if you are stiff in the ankle in getting down a little bit lower. I just showed that by floating my heel artificially. So the main thing is to not get hung up on how perfect your squat looks. Just meet yourself where you're at right now. Focus on the quality of your repetitions and maintaining control rather than doing as many as you can during the workouts and whatnot. I guarantee it will get better. Like anything, it's just practice. Now, next up, we are going to be exploring a single leg squat position. Now, that might take the shape of a split squat, of a forward or a reverse lunge, or a Cossack squat. Those are the movements that we're going to encounter in the squatting department uh, within the Hero training series. Now, our first one's going to be a split squat. And once you learn this one, you'll find you're way more confident with the rest of them. Okay, because this is a static position, we're not moving in and out of it. We basically hold the same stance throughout. Now, what I want you to do to set that up is make sure your feet aren't next to each other. They're right under the hips. And we take a step back like we're on train tracks. Now that'll help with your balance instead of being on a tightrope. Okay, we're on train tracks here. And you wanna find the balls of your feet at the back. You don't wanna be flat footed there. You wanna be nice and springy on that back, back foot on the balls and the toes. And I'm just gonna control the knee down until we're in this position. Now you see me side on. I've just basically adopted pretty standard 90 degree position in both of those. Okay, so I'm controlling down. This front leg is the one doing most of the work. <sighs> drive up and squeeze that. Okay, that is our standard static split squat position. Now throughout the series, you may encounter us do a close stance split squat. All right, and that's just gonna target the quads a little bit more because the knee has to bend even more. Okay, similarly, you can see long range lunges 
which do target the glutes a bit more, but they all exist on the same continuum. And once you know one, you'll be able to uh, adapt to the other ones that, that may come up during your training. And again, we can load that up with two dumbbells. We can load that up with a goblet, okay? Once you're comfortable with those loading patterns, you'll see them emerge during uh, various exercises, okay? Goblet position, suitcase position, okay? They're just different ways of loading it. Now, after we've learned the, the split squat there, we're gonna learn how to be dynamic with that, which is to say, moving with each repetition. Now, the first one we learn is actually the reverse lunge. It's a bit more comfortable and stable than a forward lunge. So we have that same position that we would have set up with the split squat, except I step back, touch the knee, and now I come back to the top each time, okay? So you can see there, simple as that. Now, during a workout, we might do all on one side, or we might alternate. Now, that might take a bit more balance at first, okay? But like anything, just practice, and slowing the exercise down, slowing the repetition down, can be really helpful to build that motor control so you feel comfortable there. Similarly, the forward lunge might come up, Okay, that can just feel a little bit different driving back up to the start position. So you would step forward, touch the knee, big drive up off that leg. Again, we might alternate those, okay? If you're watching here at home, I want you to be doing a practice set with me right now. I'm just gonna try five reps per side, okay? And again, there's a carryover to all of these exercises. Once you know how to balance yourself with one, you can quickly adapt to another and you're gonna encounter a lot of variety within your training. Now the last single leg squatting variation that we're gonna look at within your Hero Base Camp training is the Cossack. Now this is a challenging position because it calls on a lot of mobility, a lot of range of movement in your hips and your ankles. Now again, like anything, as long as this doesn't cause you pain, I want you to join in for it. And over time, with practice, you'll see your range of movement and your confidence and your strength improve. Okay, this involves taking a wide stance, okay? Again, takes a bit of time to practice that. I've obviously got very long legs. I'm gonna go um, very wide. And what we do is we sit down. We're basically squatting the same way we do. The hip comes back, the knee goes out, and we sit down there to the range that we can control, and then we come back up, okay? And again, we might be going all on one side, or we might be alternating. All right, so you can see that I'm trying to get as low as I can manage. There's a big stretch going on in the adductor, in the groin area there. But again, mastering this one will get you very strong and mobile. It's a great exercise. But again, you might find if you have a sofa nearby or a frame in the gym, you might just wanna hold on for that for a bit of support to go as low as you can before coming up. And over time, you can reduce your reliance on those tools, on holding something for balance and so on. Okay, now we're gonna be turning our focus to the upper body. Now, when it comes to movement patterns of the upper body, a simple way of thinking about it is push and pull. And then you can be pushing horizontally or vertically. And when it comes to pulling, you can pull vertically or pull horizontally, all right? And most of exercises fall into those categories, more or less. Um, and that's the way that we are gonna approach things today. We are looking at a pull upper body. Now, because we are just using dumbbells within this program, we are only gonna be able to pull horizontally. A vertical pull, for example, would be something like a pull up or in the gym, lat pull downs, anything where you're pulling in that kind of vertical plane. Um, now, it's obviously a great thing to have access to, but I wanted to make this program as accessible as possible, which is why we're just looking at dumbbells. Now, that's a, still in a fantastic way of strengthening the muscles in your back and a little bit in your biceps there, um, which can help with things like pull ups, all right? But in terms of upper body pulling, that's going to be the majority of our work there, is forms of rows. Now, we can get creative there, uh, and that's what I want us to explore today, okay? So the first movement we're going to be looking at is our dumbbell row, okay? That's going to be our standard position that we're going to come up against uh, time and time again. Now, if you have something like a chair or a bench, that can be a nice tool to use to stabilize the body when we're doing our rows. In this instance, a single arm row. Single arm rows, you'll find you can probably move um, heavier load compared to other exercises for the upper body. Uh, in this instance, I'm gonna turn to my medium weight dumbbell, but you often see me in workouts, depending on the kind of row that we are doing, I might reach for one of the heavier ones myself. Okay, so if you don't have access to a chair or a bench, like myself right now, I'm just gonna be relying on creating a base position, okay, just using my body. If I wanna row 
horizontally, obviously I need to get my torso into this position. So this bent over position can be one of our best, uh, best things that we can access here without having a bench to lean on or something like that. I'm simply gonna post up and lean on my front leg there. Now the main thing I'm looking at for you guys is to keep your spine nice and flat whilst we are rowing the dumbbell, all right? And the way that I think about doing that, no matter what row position we're in, is pushing the hips back, okay? Pushing the hips back and keeping the chest up. So imagine I wanna keep my chest open, okay? And I'm pushing my bum back. Now this might take a bit of practice at first, but then it will become second nature and it's very useful across so many different exercises. And you're gonna encounter that time and time again. Even though I'm in this position, I'm still thinking about pushing my bum back. I'm pushing my bum back there, extending the hips back, and even better, because I can lean on my knee here, I can keep my chest up. Now you might find you can be a bit more upright. I do like to try and encourage a more parallel position here, okay? Because you're gonna get a better stretch through the lats, okay? Big muscles in the back that we're primarily focusing on here. There are smaller muscles in there that are gonna help us, but we've got really big muscles in our back, and that's why we can usually move some considerable weight here. So what I want you to think about doing, when we grip our, grip our dumbbell, when you are confident that you're in a safe, strong position, you're bracing your core, which is there to help keep that spine stable. We are gonna pull the shoulder blade back. I like to imagine pulling it back and popping it in my back pocket like that, and then drive the elbow back as well. Okay, get a nice squeeze in the top, and then control it on down. Similar to our squats, guys, you might see me put a tempo in for these, depending on the day that we are training. We might be taking a pause at the top to really challenge ourselves. We might be slowing things down on the way down. Let's just take a look at a standard row here that I'm gonna move under control, okay? So I'm nice and stable there. I'm gonna pull that shoulder and then the elbow, and then control it down. Full stretch and back. Notice I'm trying not to move the rest of my body. Okay, just the part that's doing the work. All right. So if you're not already, I want you to join me right now and have a play with what that feels like. I'm just gonna do another five reps uh, on that side and I want you to join me as well. All right, so we're getting into that position. Nice long foot base, or if you have a bench, you can try it out. I'm gonna push the bum back, puff the chest up. And we're gonna go one, long stretch, two, three, four, and five. Okay. All right, now just as we did with the squats, I just wanna talk about a couple of things that you might encounter where you don't really know if you're doing your rows correctly. The main one we often see is you're just thinking about pulling it up. You're not thinking about trying to really feel the muscles working that we're trying to target with that movement. You're just like, I'm gonna pull it from A to B. And what that can often do is we feel it all up near the, near the neck, in the traps, which aren't really our target muscles. They're gonna help out a little bit, but we don't wanna get all jammed up there. All right, and we're just not gonna be able to really feel those lats working for us, okay? So like I said before, rather than thinking, I wanna pull the dumbbell up, think about what's doing that movement. I know it can seem a little bit, uh, kooky or, or very detail oriented at first, but it becomes second nature and it's really satisfying. All right, we keep that chest tall and we really stretch the muscle and then we drive the elbow back towards the hip. Okay, so if you ever don't really feel like you're using those muscles or you feel your shoulder rolling forward and you might feel that shoulder not, so, uh, not, not feel so good, all right, make sure you're pulling that shoulder back, back and down, all right, and using the muscles that we're trying to target there. Now what we just did there was a single arm dumbbell row. Now that's an absolute staple that we're gonna be coming back to time and time again. It's also a very stable position. Even if I'm just using my leg there, I feel really strong and safe and I'm really blocking myself and I can just focus on moving some heavy weight. There are other more advanced row variations we're gonna take a look at now, which do require a little bit more awareness in the body that you are maintaining a good spinal position so you can focus on the rowing. Um, it also means we're probably gonna use a slightly lighter load. As you get more confident, you can use some heavier weights for those if you have access to them, okay? But in this next one that we're gonna look at, the bent over dumbbell row, we don't have any support. We are literally bending the body, bracing it with the abs and making sure this is all uh, holding itself stable so we can focus on rowing. You can notice the, the movement is the same. It's just the base position that we are changing. In this instance, to show you, I'm gonna choose some lighter dumbbells, okay? But again, depending on the workout, I might find myself using the medium or the heavier ones. 
So holding your dumbbells, we're gonna have our feet stacked right under our hips, okay? Just regular toes forward position. I'm soft at the knee. And what I do here is I push my bum back like we did before until my chest is more or less facing the ground, okay? Notice I'm not rounded in the back like that. That's not so good. We wanna keep the chest up, the upper back extended. Now my back should be relatively nice and straight. I do have to brace in the belly and the core like someone's about to gut punch me. And that's just gonna keep me nice and strong and safe whilst I focus on rowing those dumbbells. So I'm using two right now and try not to let the rest of my body move. It's definitely more challenging. I can feel those muscles having to work a little bit harder, but it's a great variation for us here. Now feel free to give the video a pause and go and practice five reps yourself if you would like. And we're just gonna look at one more variation next. Now you'll notice so far with our rows, our palms have been facing in towards the body, whether it's that single arm row or the dual bent over row. We're using something called a neutral grip where the palms just stay facing in towards each other. Now this tends to be um, the strongest grip, also just feels the simplest, most straightforward, but we can manipulate the position of the hands, okay, which thus changes the position of the shoulder and how we pull, just to challenge ourselves in different ways, such as a supinated grip where we turn the palms forward. Okay, You might feel that more in the biceps when you're doing them. We might do this with a dual dumbbell bent over row, supinated, like so. So I would do the same thing, pick up my dumbbells, get myself into the position, turn the palms forward like so, and that's how we would perform our rows. Okay, that will obviously be made clear to you during the workouts. Okay, but then there's another one, which is gonna be the pronated row. Now we will look at a wide position pronated row. Again, you look at the elbow position, so far it's been relatively tight to the body. We can challenge the back in a different way, by taking the elbows out wide. That is definitely something that we would wanna use a lighter load for. Now, depending on the workout, we might be doing this single arm, we might be doing dual bent over uh, variation. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this with the lighter dumbbells here, which I would recommend for you. And again, we're performing the same movement, but it will probably feel definitely different and a little bit weaker, okay? You're not getting the same amount of help from the lats. It's mechanically a little bit different, okay, taking the elbows wide. We want to still keep them just below the level of the shoulder, like we're like an arrowhead shape, okay? So again, I'm just going to turn my palms facing away from me now, okay, behind me, and drive them out to the side of the body diagonally. All right, definitely feels a little bit tougher there. Okay, but again, once you know how to hold a base position and we're moving the shoulder blades and the elbows, you'll be able to tackle these different variations with confidence. Now we are coming to the end of day one of your Hero Base Camp and I just have two more exercises to show you. These do target the back musculature just in a slightly different way, okay? It's what we would call an isolation exercise where we're targeting specific muscles within the back, all right? And we would usually not use lighter dumbbells for this versus what we'd call a compound movement where multiple joints are moving. This, uh, in the nature of isolation, usually just one joint is moving there and thus allows us to uh, use less weight. Okay, the first one we're gonna be looking at is a bent over fly, okay? So rather than rowing now, we make the arm longer, we keep it fixed, and we raise the weight that way. So that's gonna be mechanically much tougher. We're gonna hit the rhomboids in the upper back, and we're also gonna be getting some trap and rear deltoids. So you might see this come up in shoulder workouts in upper body sessions, but you also might see it come up in, in days when we're targeting the back also. Okay, so again, we're gonna to wanna to use lighter loads here. Now it goes without saying, when we come to do follow along workouts together, we're gonna to be using a running clock, okay? So that we can all stay on the same page but you might find you have to stop. You might have your different weights than I, or I might have to stop before the allotted time is finished. Anytime that happens, I just want you to do your best. You might wanna come back to it. You might wanna rest for the remainder of that window. It depends how those weights that you have access to are challenging you, um, especially in relation to the exercises that you are currently doing, okay? It's important that we remember that uh, no matter what the exercise, no matter what the workout. Definitely challenge yourself, okay? But be smart uh, and understand that we're all gonna be working with different, uh, different equipment uh, in different environments. So I'm gonna use these. Now these are relatively on the, actually the, the heavier side for what I might be able to use for this. So say if we were working for 40 seconds, I might have to take a little break before coming back to it, okay? So we're gonna use a bent over position, generally speaking, when it comes to a, uh, a bent over fly, a reverse fly. You'll hear it called by different names, okay? 
I'm going to maintain that same position as the bent over row, get my dumbbells there, try and keep everything fixed. I'm going to have a little bit of a bend in the elbow, okay? And I'm going to try and keep it that way. I'm going to raise them out and control them down. Raise them out, control them down. Notice what I'm not doing is using momentum or bending the elbows at the top. I am trying to raise them and control them. Raise them and control them down. Now that definitely felt tough. Again, I might find myself some lighter dumbbells at some point, or I could challenge myself by taking breaks where I need to using that slightly heavier load. Both are fine, both can create, uh, can create great progress. Now the last exercise we're gonna be looking at is the dumbbell pullover. Now it targets the muscles in the back, the lats, um, but usually we're gonna use a lighter load for this. By nature of the exercise and the fact that we are holding the dumbbell far away from us means that mechanically it's really tough, okay? Now we're gonna have a look here, I'm using my lighter dumbbell. Now what you might find, depending on how tight you are in the shoulders, um, that raising it overhead is really challenging when we're lying down there. I want you to use the range of movement that you feel comfortable using, and over time that will probably uh, improve. That's the amazing thing about weight training. It can also improve uh, your mobility and your flexibility. So what you're gonna see us do is I'm gonna um, lie down flat on the floor there. I'm gonna have my knees up, and I'm gonna hold the dumbbell is what's known as a crush grip, where I'm holding the heads of the dumbbell. You could also hold it with the handle like so, okay? But by doing so, what can often happen is the dumbbell touches uh, the floor, the head of the dumbbell there, and it can reduce our range of movement. So we can try holding that crush grip, okay? Again, I want you to use the one that you feel most confident um, in doing the exercise with, that's absolutely fine. So whilst we're holding the dumbbell over the chest, I try and keep my arms uh, as straight as I can. They can have a little bit of a bend, but try to keep that fixed throughout. I'm gonna hit my palm tree. I'm gonna control it over, touch the floor behind me, and then pull back over. Okay, we're gonna try that again. You might feel that challenge in the shoulders as well, okay? But again, as long as there's no pain, that's absolutely fine. But for example, if you find that getting to there is tough, you could use that, and then over time, you could focus on trying to work towards the floor. Okay, that's gonna conclude day one of Hero Base Camp. I hope you found this video useful. I cannot wait to be starting this series with you. And again, you can come back to this anytime. You wanna understand the movements a little bit more. You wanna take the time to practice. If you ever find like you're struggling with those in the workouts themselves. Until next time, guys, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.